Welcome back, everyone. Lecture 39, we're going to continue the nucleus part six. And today we're just going to do examples. OK, we're going to do some problems. OK, so try to bear with me. Pause. Make sure you understand everything. OK, some radioactivity examples. So let's look first. After 45 hours, only 1 32nd of a sample remains. What is the half life? OK. So let's see, 1 32nd of a sample. That means it decayed in half, a half times a half times a half times a half times a half. 1 over 2 to the fifth is 1 32nd. So 1 32nd is five half lives. So we have five half lives, HL, in 45 days. So again, if it's 1 32nd, how many times did it decay? A half times a half times a half times a half times a half. Five decays is one, one oh, a half times a half times a half times a half times a half. Five times is 1 32nd. So five decays in 45 hours, one decay, the half life, 45 divided by five is nine hours. Okay, so nine is the answer, nine hours. Okay, next one. Same problem, same exact problem, different numbers. After 300 years, only 1 64th of a sample remains. 1 64th. What is 1 64th? 1 64th is six decays, a half times a half times a half. You've got to work it out. Half to, six half lives. So 1 over 64 means it decayed in half six times. If it decays in half six times, six decays in 300 years. So one decay, 300 divided by six is 50 years. That's the answer. Okay, 50 years. Good, next one. Same problem, same problem, same problem. Different numbers, okay? After 30 weeks, only 1 32nd of a sample remains. What is the half-life? Again, 1 32nd we set up here is five decays. Half times a half times a half times a half times a half. Five decays in 30 weeks. So one decay is six weeks. So the answer here is six weeks. So that's the half-life, okay? Now let's do the other types of problems we did in the last lecture, right? Now I'm giving you the half-life, and we want to see how much remains. The half-life of x is four hours. And we're assuming X changes into Y or something else. How much of a 128 microgram sample remains after one day? Well, after one day, one day is 24 hours, right? One day, 24 hours. One day equals 24 hours. So four hours, you've undergone six decays or six half lives, okay? Six decays. All right, that means one half times one half times one half six times is equal to one over 128 if you work it out. Okay, so there's one over 128 remaining. Okay, oh, sorry, 64. One over two to the sixth, one over two to the sixth, one over two to the sixth is one sixty fourth. My mistake. All right. So one sixty fourth of of one twenty eight micrograms is how much? One sixty fourth of one twenty eight is two. Okay. So the answer to the first one is. Two micrograms of X remain. Okay, so one sixty fourth of one twenty eight is two micrograms. Now the other question is how much of element Y? If it changes into element Y, whatever is left is Y. So if we started with one hundred twenty eight micrograms, that means one hundred twenty six micrograms of Y produced. So if there's two micrograms of X that remain, whatever's left over has to be element Y. Okay, 
So one over two to the sixth is one sixty fourth, not one over one twenty eight. Don't be dumb like this old man. Okay, I'm gonna erase because you have it, and let's see if we can do the next one. Same problem. I'm trying to do the same problem a couple times over with different numbers. Half life of Z is eight weeks. How much? of a 640 nanogram sample remains after 40 weeks. All right, eight weeks is the half-life. 40 weeks means it underwent five half-lives. So a half times a half times a half times a half times a half is 1 32nd. So if we started with 640, 132 times 640 is 20, whatever, um, um, nanograms. So 20 nanograms of Z remain. Okay, if 20 nanograms of Z remain, whatever's left over is element Y. So from 640, therefore we have 620 nanograms of Y produced. So the half-life is eight weeks. In 40 weeks, it underwent five decays. One over two to the fifth is 132nd. So 132nd of the original 640 is 20 nanograms. That's how much Z remains. And then what it, what's produced is element Y. So whatever's left over from the 640 nanograms is element Y. And that would be 620 nanograms. Okay? Not so bad. Let's do another one. One more of these. Same problem. Same problem. I'm just changing the numbers. Okay? So these are the two types of problems we're doing. Half-life is 16 years. How much of this sample remains after 96 years? Well, 96 divided by 16, 96 divided by 16 is 6. So that means there's 6 half-lives. Okay? 1 over 2 to the 6th is 1 over 64. I think you remember that, right? So that means 164 times 128 milligrams is two milligrams of X remain. Well, how much, how much, so how much, uh, how much Y is produced? Well, again, if there's two milligrams of X remain, whatever is left over is Y, so it's 126 milligrams of Y is produced. So once again, the half-life is 16 years. So we have to figure out how many times it decayed in 96 years. Well, 16 into 96 is six. If it decayed in half six times, one over two to the power of six is 1 64th. So we have 1 64th of the original sample, 128 micromilligrams is two milligrams. So X has two milligrams remaining. Whatever was left over from the 128 is two from 128 is 126 milligrams of element Y. Fantastic. All right, now let's do one other type of problem. And this involves alpha, beta, gamma decay. So let's look at the silly problem. Element 80 undergoes 5 alpha, that's an alpha, 4 beta minus, 10 beta plus, and 6 gamma. What is the new element? Okay, so let's remember when it's alpha decay, alpha decay, lose two protons. Beta minus decay, what do you do? You add one proton. Beta plus decay, you lose one proton. And gamma decay, nothing happens. So let's do the first problem. 80. 5 alpha decays. Every alpha has 2 protons, so we have to subtract 10. 
five times two. Four beta minus. Every time there's a beta minus, you add a proton, plus four. 10 beta plus. Every time it's a beta plus, you subtract. So you have minus 10. Gamma, nothing. So what do we get? We get 70, 74 minus 10. The new element is element 64. Element 64. Okay. Let's do the next problem. Okay. Element 42 undergoes 10 alpha. Remember, alpha, you lose two protons. So 10 times 2 is 20. So we subtract 20. 10 beta minus. A beta minus, you add a proton. So you add 10. 6 beta plus. A positive beta, positron decay, you lose a proton. So subtract 6. And gamma, 20 gammas. Gamma does nothing. So you just put 0 there. So we have 42 minus 20 is 22. Plus 10 is 32. Minus 6, I guess the new element is... 26. Okay, on an exam, if you have a periodic table, you can tell me what element 26 is or what element 80 or whatever. Otherwise, I would just have multiple choice and you'd pick the correct number of protons. All right, so this is very easy and we've done half life problems. Okay, we still need to discuss, which we've mentioned in nucleosynthesis, we mentioned nuclear fusion. I want to talk about nuclear fission. I want to talk about atomic bombs. And I want to talk about uh, um, nuclear reactors. Okay, so we'll do that in the next lecture. Okay, good luck. Stay safe. See you soon.